Hi, I'm Michael Voris. Before today's episode, I'd like to invite you to please check out our website at churchmilton.com. We cover the latest Catholic news happening all over the world, and don't forget to check out our premium channel with hundreds of hours of apologetics, catechesis, church history, stories of saints, and a whole lot more. We've received countless testimonies that because of shows such as The One True Faith or Basic Training or Case Files, that people have grown such a deeper love for God and His Holy Church. I'd like to invite you to visit our site and learn as much as you can. Keep us in your prayers and we'll do the same for you. Enjoy today's episode of The Vortex and we'll see you at churchmilton.com. God love you. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Look around the world, and you see a resurgence in political conservatism. Look around the church, and you see a resurgence in theological orthodoxy, also known as tradition. Just as the political cultural left has aligned itself with dissidents in the church and vice versa, so too many tradition-minded Catholics have aligned themselves, to a degree, with the more politically conservative agenda. It wouldn't be surprising, for instance, to find that most attendees at a traditional Latin Mass also voted for Trump. Likewise, it would be no surprise whatsoever to see that many Catholics trapped in the Church of Nice were Hillary supporters, certainly many more than at any traditional Latin Mass. So there is a marriage of sorts being formed between orthodoxy and political conservatism, just as there has been a long-standing marriage between political liberals and dissidents and heretics in the church. It's not always a stark, bright line, but there's enough of a reality there to speak of it and examine it. What are the uniting forces in both camps? What's the glue that holds each side respectively together? Ultimately, it's the question of God. Pretty straightforward. The left hates God, they hate the divine, the authentic supernatural, and anything that even approaches these realities. You'll find many, many more atheists, for example, on the political left than you will on the political right. Same is true of agnostics and people who don't attend church at least once a week. None of this is especially surprising on one level, that level being political, but what is disturbing, if not surprising, is the vast number of dissidents within the church who also happen to align themselves with the political and cultural left. It's hard to imagine, for example, a MAGA bumper sticker on Cardinal Supich or Cardinal Tobin's limo, right? And see, each side has staked out issues near and dear to them. The left winds on and on about social justice, gun control, illegal immigration, animal rights, the death penalty, climate change, cigarette smoking, gay rights, women's rights, soda pop drinking, to make themselves feel good and appear morally superior. They even present evil things as good, dressing them up in flowery language which hides the truth of the matter. Abortion is a woman's right, sodomy is love wins, and so forth. All these efforts to replace absolute morality with subjective morality are their way to soothe their consciences, which are made for the truth which they have denied. In rejecting God and the absolute morality which necessarily flows from living in accord with the divine, they have created a whole new morality, and so disturbed are their consciences that they must force everyone else to live by their new moral code. This has been escalating for decades now. Anyone under the age of 35 years has no living memory of the world before the politically correct new morality crowd took over. They think abortion is just normal, as is pornography, violence, homosexuality, and the whole pot of filth that destroys civilizations. Sadly, very sadly, many of the people supportive of these evils are bad Catholics. You know many of them in politics and entertainment, but you don't know the vast, non-famous crowd of them, and they're all around you. It's why the country is in the condition that it is in. They shack up, view pornography, engage in the hookup culture, contracept, divorce, and abort at the same rate as the rest of the culture. And they are baptized Catholics who have received little to no instruction because many of their leaders have thrown their lots in with the political left because, like their political allies, they too have no real faith, certainly not supernatural faith. 
If the Trump victory in 2016 revealed anything, it is that political conservatives were finally fed up with political correctness. And many of those conservatives were also Orthodox Catholics. And what they contributed to in the election, they are also contributing to in the church. They want tradition back in the church more than they wanted a restoration of sanity in the political order. Just consider that 10 years ago, there was almost no organized voice of opposition to the dissidents in the church. They ran everything, it seemed. In truth, they pretty much still do. But, and it's a big but, back then, there was very little vocal opposition to their schemes, largely because there was no way to communicate opposition on a large scale. Enter the internet, please. Stage right. Now, tradition-minded Catholics are finding each other through various websites, blogs, social media pages, etc. A great groundswell has begun, which, while not quite ready to restore sanity in the church, is laying the groundwork for that restoration. Just in the case of church militant alone, 10 years ago, we were essentially ignored. These days, we are vilified and talked about nonstop by all the <clears throat> right people, both in the church and outside of the church, and often those groups are the same individuals. So what's happened? Why is Trump in the White House and Latin back in so many masses? Because truth has a very cool attribute, a way of always being found. It's like water. It always finds a way. Now, this does not mean that the fight is easier. In fact, in some ways, it's become more difficult, more intense, because the left senses the sea change and is now acting like a wounded animal. How wounded the left is, both in and out of the church, is still an unknown, but they're definitely wounded. And you can tell that not just how they are responding, but that they are responding. The world created by the godless left is crumbling apart, as everything without God always eventually does. And this is why the battle is intensifying. Those on the left have given their entire lives to an idea, the idea being that man is supreme and can create a world ruled by him. That is manifestly untrue, but nonetheless, they have poured every bit of themselves into this notion from their earliest days. Think no further than Hillary or Obama. Now, as all this begins to crumble, men in the church and out of the church who believe all this godless nonsense are scrambling. They're going on the attack, correctly sensing that all they have invested themselves in is vanishing. It will be some time before it's all gone, more than likely, and they are shoring up every foundation they can. But in the end, God wins, not them. This is never more important to realize than in the church. For decades now, wicked or duped, churchmen have spewed church of nice nonsense, largely echoing the views of their political allies on the left and their political correctness. The Mass has become a communal meal where we have equal rights in the sanctuary with women lectors and girl altar boys and Holy Communion in the hand and everyone holding hands during the Our Father, a complete break with Catholic tradition across the board. And now, at last, we have reached the point of tradition rising as more and more people are attending traditional Latin Masses or at least reverent, properly offered Novus Ordo Masses. All the noise is coming from the Orthodox crowd and the dissidents and heretics are on the defense, an almost perfect reflection of the political scene. Each year, one diocese after another closes down a bunch of church of nice parishes and schools and convents, and each year, another traditional parish or community or independent Catholic school opens up. It's clear where all this is going and why church leaders refuse to see it and respond to it warmly only speaks to their stubbornness of heart in the face of the chaos that they have allowed to come about and oftentimes actually created. However long and sad and destructive they are, fads pass. Tradition lasts because truth never goes out of style. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello, Militant. If you were silently nodding your head to today's Vortex episode, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and... Don't forget to check out our website at churchmilitant.com. We keep up to date with all the latest in the Catholic world and also have loads of one-of-a-kind Catholic videos covering everything from church history to apologetics. Countless people have told us how much our work has helped them to become more faithful Catholics. So please follow our social media channels as well. The links are right below. 
Hope to see you tomorrow for the Vortex and much more. Thanks, and may God bless you.